question is why do you think does Lally always distance herself from a long-term <laughs> relationship like marriage? And that's going to be discussed by Josh and Rob. Okay, well, Lally is not really the type of, type of woman who wants to make herself vulnerable or feel or have to open up about anything. You know, as when she was speaking with that Nigerian guy, he was asking her questions about where she's from and she always gave very, very vague answers and stuff, which sort of shows us that she's not really that keen to have anything serious or anything like that. And also she, she has a, a kind of an uneasiness about, about you know, being married and starting families or anything like that. So she, she generally tries to like sort of stay on her own and stay independent, you know, because she doesn't really want to get herself involved in any of that. So. Well, uh, I feel as if, um, like throughout the book, we like the, the author highlights that Lani, she doesn't want to be part of the conventional normal system, like the norms that everyone follows. And I feel like she thinks marriage is the normal stereotypical thing that all women want to have. They want to have that beautiful marriage with a white dress walking down the aisle, and, like little girls throwing kettles and stuff. And she just want to be part of that like stereotypical image, you know? So, I think she distanced herself from that idea because a relationship and marriage are something that is so common that everyone, all women want. And she wants to be different, she doesn't want to follow the norms of society. Agreed, yeah. Agreed. Alright, um, question two <coughs> is what makes Lally's attitudes towards pregnancy unconventional? That will be answered by Estienne Crick. Thanks, Kelly. Um, Lally's attitude towards pregnancy is unconventional because um, as Josh already stated, she doesn't like, she doesn't want to um, get into, into the norm. She doesn't like being seen as the stereotype. And that's also another thing that is natural for women is, is pregnancy, obviously. And a lot of women want kids, etc. But she doesn't, she doesn't feel the, the urge or the, the drive to actually have kids. It's not as important in her life as it is in most people's lives. She, um, she says that she's already had a pregnancy and a miscarriage or whatever. But, it's, um, but it hasn't affected her in a, in a way where she just, uh, I'm so close now, I really want a kid now. She just goes with it the way the world carries it. So, um, yeah. She, I mean, yeah, she even says, one of the quotes is that it gives her a non-specific uneasiness. So it's, she, it just makes her feel like a little small something, that's about it. She couldn't care more than that. Yeah, yeah I think it just sort of plays into the, with the whole marriage thing. It just adds to that vulnerability and that, that way that she doesn't want to open herself up. She feels pregnancy also plays into that because if she has the child, that adds a sense of commitment and something that then she has to take care of and do. And that just adds to the fact that she, that she really doesn't want to have that vulnerability in her life. Mm. Okay, um, question three is, how do her attitudes link to her relationships and her past? That's going to be answered by Philip. Well, yeah, I said, I took the question a bit differently, and I, but yeah, sure. It, it relates to her relationships in the past where she still very much feels the same towards everything. In now and the past, you still see she, like we've been discussing, she's very detached, unconventional, stays away from things. Even in the past, when Cece tries to show her some affection and give her a hug, which she really has no clue what's going on. She's so taken back by what's happening and she doesn't know how to respond. I mean, she then tries to give, she gives her address because that's the only thing she can see that's necessary for a way to say thank you to Cece. And also when she's on the farm, I forget the name of the character, but the mother there often tries to get her involved and show her how to be this conventional woman. And very much she, again, steps back, says, no, I don't want to do it. She'd rather go and feed the chickens on the farm and all that. And also, yeah. And it, it fairly much says the same even. My first question is, why does Lally prefer short-lived relationships to more permanent ones, like relationship with no? Um, I think the first reason is that she doesn't want kids, and it, it, if she gets into a long-term relationship, the likelihood that she's going to have kids is much greater. She's probably going to be forced into having kids, and with her having short-term relationships, she won't need to have kids, as she won't feel the pressure, and she's able to control it. Uh, more, ease, more easily having a short term relationship and then the other reason is um, she doesn't want to commit to a relationship because she's not secure in who she is and yeah, she doesn't feel confident in who she is um, and then the other question is why does she have so many different relationships I think it's very closely linked to the answer question number five and Basically, because of her insecurity and the number of relationships she's had when she was younger and stuff, um, she's insecure with who she is and she doesn't, um, that, that's the reason why she's had so many relationships. Yeah. 
Um, for question seven, it's, is there any emotional connection with her lover, or is it a way to rebel? If not, why does she move from lover to lover? And I don't think she has any emotional connection with any of her lovers, um, maybe with the exception of the one, but it's, it's never going to ever like, materialize into marriage or anything. Um, she moves from lover to lover because that's like her lifestyle. She never gets tied down in one place for too long. Um, she's, she's completely uh, against being stuck in one place and because of the issues she's had in her past and the problems that she had as like a little girl, she's never been a fully interactive person. She doesn't get on very well with, with other people. And I think she's almost scared of getting into a long-term permanent relationship. Yeah. Um, the question is, Pim's, Pim is perhaps an exception to Laddie's lack of commitment due to a permanent relationship. Suggest why that is. Um, this, I, I don't think the statement is correct. I, I think Martha was the only one she considered as a permanent uh, relationship because she thought about the idea of marriage and starting a family. Um, but if you think that Pim is the only exception, you could say that it's because they have past relations and that, um, especially the night in the barn, so um, Laddie would like to have the comfort of uh, familiarity. With, uh, with, uh, with them. Um, yeah, that's what she goes back to them. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a chance that maybe she feels like alone, and I know she's quite a loner, but you know, you don't like being away from everything you, you know. So you think it's because she grew up with him, he was a part of her life from back in South Africa. Do you think maybe she develops a relationship with him because of that? I think it's because he's young. He's the only thing in, in London that's. that's she, can, she can relate to Yeah. yeah. Kind of as such, she looks like she's drawn to him in that way. Mm -hmm. They have they have a lot in common because they're Christians to the system, so therefore they have a lot in common. So therefore they. Yeah. Then our question two: Why does Pim enjoy getting drunk with and buying food with Maddie? And the answer is in the comments. I think there are two reasons for this. The one is it's given in there. It says that he doesn't really have time for fun anymore because of his family, because he's given it because of work. So he likes having some time to kick back in that <coughs> And then another reason is that he enjoys feeling young again and feeling popular like he did when he was in school. Because he was a popular guy and uh, people loved him. And I think it ties in with um, when he's in bed with Laddie, he thinks about how uh, he fantasizes about the young girls from his past, which also helps him feel young and, and popular and you know, like the main guy. I think that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So, I'm... Are you adding to this Okay, I have question three. Um, discuss Pim's attitude towards his third child with Ruth, because it's basically... So, yeah, it says uh, Pim is irrevocable, which means he can't take it back. So, yeah, he, he's got this child and it's not like he can do anything to stop it from coming. And then it also says that he's rapidly adjusting to the idea of the third child. So he's, Getting used to the, the idea of having another child in the household, having another child to, to raise. So there's not much to that. Yeah, it's not like he's excited about having a child. It's just like a nice question is, what advantages are there for learning in a relationship with Pim? Well, obviously, aside from fulfilling, fulfilling her uh, needs, uh, <laughs> it sort of gives her like an emotional attachment. Ever since she left South Africa, she's struggled to find like a reason to be living, a reason to like latch herself onto you, something for her to be there for. And I mean, Pim kind of gives her that, like, there's a reason why she stays in London. And she doesn't really have much else, because she's, she's working with her, she's not really interested in her job. I think really, everything in her life right now is to her affair with Pim when he goes in. Yeah, I think the fact that he is in a relationship already, and that he's married, he's got to the family, it helps her to not have to commit to him too much. So it's just a chilled, casual thing that she can have with him, which is what she is. She's sort of looking for him and like provides with some yeah, provides with some excitement. Yeah. Like boring and not like work. It's not emotion, it's just that sort of physical thing. Yeah. She's yeah. gonna activate. Yeah. Yeah. And then um last Yeah. Alright, um we're gonna be focusing on Lally and Arthur's relationship and their interaction. And uh, what the story reveals about the two and about Lally. Um, so, question one: Why can't Lally see that uh, African needs people like her? Oh, well, the big issue with Lally about like sort of lifting the wall that's over her eyes about like why African needs people like her. Arthur is that 
she has no patriot, patriotic sort of spirit. She doesn't feel any need to to like be involved in what's happening in South Africa. She doesn't like that in school, right? Yeah, yeah. She sort of wants to so. completely cut herself off and Arthur just keeps her in a way reminding her. He's very much a policy to her, but he's very patriotic. It was kind of strange that she would sort of she have a relationship with him when he was obviously very African that sort of like ruins the distance that she's created between herself and her. And also that he doesn't really see where she can actually help in Africa. Because in the past, she didn't do much, like the firework incidents. She, she had the potential to change what happened, to change the outcome, but she didn't do it. Well, it's not I'm not sure that she doesn't see it, it's that she doesn't want to see it. Yeah, I'm not sure she wants to because uh, it's, it's her rebellious side, <coughs> obviously um, contributing to her country and to her process is something that's um, seen by society to be a good thing, and then she wants to rebel against that. The big thing about that is that uh, her major personality trait is she wants to socially distance herself from everything that relates to her past and any normal ideas you know, so without think, causing such an uproar. I don't think it's a rebellion, I just think it's just self-absorbed. Yeah. Self yeah. self yeah. yeah. So she refused to run away from problems like going to London and stuff, so running away from problems. Okay, um, what interests Lally about the idea of marriage? what kind of commitment suits her character. I think um, she's not really geared for a, a long-term relationship at all. <coughs> she, she doesn't like to be tied down by one specific guy. That's why she goes through so many guys. Yeah, well, it says in the book there that what interests her is the whole picture of being an academic's wife and then for him or what is it, teaching him, teaching her how to make certain dishes and then oh, are they, uh, and then that's as far as it goes, but she she aims for the she aims for the what you call it the, the no strings attached. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's more interested in terms of marriage and like not really experiencing it, but how marriage could change how she actually acts and interacts with other people. I think that's why um, her relationship with Pim is so suiting because he can he can stick around, um, which gives her that stability in her life. <coughs> but he's already married, and that sort of prevents Pim from. You know, getting to know her too well because she she does like close herself off. She doesn't want to reveal um, herself. I think, I think this also shows how selfish she is again. <coughs> because the idea of marriage like interests her like the um, like financial security and uh, that kind of thing. So it's all it's all about herself. She's not willing to yeah, she's not willing to open up and have that side of marriage. And also sharing with another person. Like when Kevin kind of brings her, uh, going back to the other chapter, when he brings her, uh, what's it, food on there, mm -hmm. that, that yeah, yeah, couch. Yeah. Um, like the sort of, the, she didn't even register the action, like she couldn't, it just wouldn't fit for her to sort of be in a situation where she's continuously living with another person, and she'd have to sort of interact with them and partake in their decisions and make her own decisions about what both of them would do rather than what she was just doing. I think even though she, she loves Pum, she loves being by herself more. Yeah. And that's why she ultimately doesn't stay with one man at a time. Or not at a time, yeah. for a long time. I think it represents like, her uh, having to, to be tied to something. That's why she has no possessions, or she has very little possessions in the form of furniture and stuff, because she feels that if she like, starts filling up the space, then she's going to need to stay there. And that's why she she, does, she thinks that the gift is like time and not what she does. I think to touch back <coughs> on what Pegel said about um, stability, I think what she sees in marriage is stability, obviously with somebody that you love and somebody having that, because uh, throughout her life she's always regarded herself as being different. I mean, in marriage would make her feel normal, because mm -hmm. that's what you do in society. Yeah. And she's always sort of on the fringes of like formalized society, so it just wouldn't make sense for all her to live with that sort of structure, you know, that's the kind of structure that she prefers, where everyone sort of leaves her alone. No, but you can say Arthur was exceptional, because Arthur's the one who made him think about that in the first place. Okay, well, why does Lely adopt <coughs> such a defensive attitude when Arthur asks her about her childhood? It's because she's, um, yeah, she's scared to open up, she's not like opening up to people. Yeah, and well, you can see. The, the incident that I highlighted with Norman's son actually getting abducted, abducted by the police 
Yeah, it's like the highlight of what happened to and what caused the whole emotional state, basically. I don't, think, I don't think she wants to tell that story again because it doesn't make her feel good. It's not yeah. a good story for her. She doesn't want to remember it. A part and that ties, the, that ties in with um, the memory chapter. Yeah. Um, she doesn't want to remember it because it doesn't make her... Yeah. So we were doing a Lally and South Africa and four questions. Each guy will answer and we will discuss each part. Uh, the first question was, uh, what evidence is there that in this chapter that Lally does not like South Africa? If you go up, it's on the last page. Uh, she says here, for her last lover, uh, Arthur said, Africa needs people like us, excited and idealist behind her spectacles. To go back, to believe. Lally didn't see how Africa, or anything else for that matter, could possibly do that. So she obviously feels here that um, Africa doesn't need her at all, but it's, I think it's more than just the country, it's more the society that she was brought up in. You know, the cruelty of the boarding school that she was in and everything that was kind of pushed against her. And I also felt here that, you know, England is more of a free country compared to the apartheid ridden um, South Africa, and society didn't reject her in England. And so that's, that was my view, I don't know if you guys. I think, um I think you can look at it um, on a psychological level here. When it goes, after a time, because earlier on it says that he would tell her stories, he was a storyteller. It says, after a time, he tried to pry out her stories. She told him about potato picking and other incidents of travel, summers in Europe, pompous buses, but he wanted to know before that, the common heritage of Africa. I don't remember, said Lani. And I think it keeps on going on with her saying, I don't recall, or so long ago and stuff. And I think that whole memory suppression thing. Because she probably, she, um, from this, just from looking at these pages, by the fact that she can pick out almost anything, any other memory, but her saying that she can't remember this, she's trying to purposefully suppress these memories because they were bad. But you should see Aswell, she just uses general words, Aswell. So, like to describe, she just says small or hot in summer, big, small, hot, cold, Aswell. So that also plays the part of what Chabu is saying, that she's very. I also think, on the other hand, you know, Lalia is trying to remove herself from being a part of South Africa and, you know, kind of inheriting the traits that South Africa gives to her. So I think, you know, she's in the same way as Pim was trying to get away from South Africa. She did it in her own way by not exposing herself to other people and the stories behind South Africa. Yeah, because nowhere does it necessarily say that she doesn't like Africa. It's more, she's finding an excuse not to go back by saying they don't need me, almost what Pim yeah. did with voting and yeah. creating the sort of thing that Africa needs him and he's involved. She's doing the opposite. Uh, my question is, why does Lali always back away from things when she has such positive views on what the future could hold? And uh, a while ago, when we were having class discussions and discussions up front in there, we kind of deduced that Lali kind of has issues. And we can see throughout the book, there are times where she's considered removing a diaphragm and, and becoming pregnant, or the times where she talks about Arthur and how she fantasize about them having like a future together and her cooking for him and, and stuff like that. And, and these are all positive things, things that she should be looking forward to. But then at the end, she decides not to because again, that, that whole insecurity thing about her and she's scared to feel vulnerable and stuff plays out again. And she, she doesn't feel she, it would suit her because she's like alone and stuff and she doesn't like settling down as well. So. Yeah, I think being vulnerable to Lally is to be normal and she doesn't want to be normal so she makes herself completely blocked out from everyone else's sights and views and gets her own understanding of life. I think maybe um, in the other chapter where she recently found Sipo hiding in the shed, I think maybe that whole incident could have had an effect because if you remember um, like Sipo was in the shed because she was sort of insomniac, she went out and saw him and she tried to help him and it even said that like for a while, because before that, if you remember, she was being su she was quite suicidal. So it said that for a while, he became sort of her purpose for living. She was like a connection to the world for him because she was sort of isolated from everyone else. And I think maybe when they captured C, because remember that was, that was basically her purpose for that time period. But I think when they captured C, it showed her like the ephemerality of anything good. Because at that point he was what was good for See, her. But, but that's another point is that she wanted to commit suicide. That that speaks volumes by itself. That 
she, I mean, she had problems before that. She didn't eat. Um, Pim's mother was always complaining that she wasn't like M D and she wasn't like really into all these things. So that that tells you quite a lot that she she does have issues. Man. She needs help. Yeah, the next one. Uh, my chat, my question, question four. It's Arthur Lani. You're not the only one to be confused, to be angry. Question is, why should Lani feel either of these emotions? I think we can go back to what John just talked about now. The, the three incidents, which even in the book were labeled doubts, and doubts are generally things that cause confusion. And as you see, Arthur is a very academic man, so he's probably dabbled in psychology a bit, and he knows that like, when you have these sort of doubts and they keep on building up, because as you remember, she even said herself, she, she's going to keep on trying to find truths. Now, he, he's saying that, like, yes, he understands that when these doubts build up, they can be what caused the blockings, and that it's better for her to try and stop them. I think that's why I, that's why, that's why I feel um, feel these emotions because throughout her past she just kept on having doubts and they just kept on building up. And throughout many cases, uh, an instance of the anger could be the part, the incident with Zulu, where yeah, with the firecrackers, where she felt helpless. I also think that she's angry because everyone else sees society be to be completely truthful, where she knows the truth behind it because of her eyes are opened up to actually seeing the truth, and it's a, it's a drastic change to how she feels about the past, and that's why she doesn't want to bring it up because it just makes her confused and angry because she knows that he would see it in a different sense because he's part of society and she believes that she isn't. No, I also think as the book moves on, and progresses almost in time, it comes to a point where people realize the truth about what apartheid actually was and realize they were being lied to. I mean, when you lie to, it generally causes anger. So, they almost at a specific time before the end of apartheid, the truth came out of most of the country or the people that lived here and lied to were all angry. 